Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have been to a lot of garage sales in my life and I've also hosted quite a few. So I wanted to share 15 tips with you on how to have a successful garage sale. So if you wanna see them, then just stay tuned. Tip number one, petty cash. Always be able to break bills when you're having a garage sale. I know you're gonna make money as the day goes on, but if that first customer walks through your door and hands you a 20 and you can't break it, then you've lost your sale. Um, here in Oklahoma, we have pretty big garage sales, especially when we host them because we have multiple family members. So we do around $100 broke up. So I'll have ones, I'll have fives and tens and a few 20s because occasionally we will get that $100 bill if they're spending a lot. And then also have change. So have quarters, dimes and nickels just in case you need those as well. Tip number two, advertise. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is set a date and then a start time. You don't necessarily need an end time, but I would say I'm gonna start Saturday at eight o'clock and then know what date you're gonna host the garage sale on so that you can start posting either the day before or two days before so you can draw interest into your garage sale. So the places I like to advertise are Craigslist and Facebook. And I think those are two good ones because they're free. Facebook is good because you have a lot of friends and family that are local and if they see it, they'll want to come, especially if they know you. And then Craigslist is good because you get a wide range of people and people are willing to drive for garage sales. I'll go 20, 30 minutes if there's a good one and they have great pictures. So advertise really well and put pictures in those ads. Take pictures of items. Uh, if you have, if you can get it set up in your garage a few days before, then get a wide picture, but also zoom in and get your high priced items. Like if you have a sofa or a beautiful flower arrangement, key in on those pieces because people will see those and want to come to your garage sale to shop it. Tip number three, signs. You are going to want to put signs to get people there. I am terrible with addresses. So if you just have one random sign at an intersection and it has an address that I can't even see to write down and I'm passing it, you're gonna lose me. I don't know how many times we've pulled into a neighborhood and me and my husband drive around and drive around and can't find it. And so we head out and go to another one. So you will lose business that way. Have signs getting you from every turn, every spot that they need to turn to get to your house have a sign there and an arrow pointing which way and have the signs matching. When they start becoming different colors and different designs, you don't know if that's two garage sales or if it's just one, have you missed one? So be very clear. I also add balloons to mine, which were kind of further out to draw your attention or to spot them. So make sure they're bright or you have balloons and they're eye catching and that they will lead straight to your house. Tip number four, pricing. You need to price every item. And I know this is time consuming and it's a lot of work, but it will get you more money in the long run. I go to garage sales all the time and I don't mind asking for maybe a few items if I see one thing I want or two. But if I see about 10 things that I want and I have to be like, how much is this? How much is that? How much for this? I give up and we walk away. And I don't wanna just pick up all those items and go to check out because I don't know what you're asking for them. I may only wanna spend $5 and you may be asking 20. And so I don't wanna go check out and then have to put those items back. So price everything. Along with pricing, if you're having more than one family member in your garage sale or more than one family, label the tags. So we always use tape, like masking tape with a Sharpie, and I'll put a dollar, and then I always put an A for Ashley. So if I'm hosting it, or if my mother-in-law is, she knows when something sells to mark that under the A category, and that's my money. So be sure to always label your prices and price everything. Tip number five, paper and pins. I got the pie, I, I, I. 
You always need to have a paper and pen around for multiple reasons. Number one, if you're having that multifamily garage sale and there's different labels, have categories so as stuff sells, you can mark down. Mom got this, Dad got that, or Sally May got that. So you can write everything down in labeling. You'll also want pins around because as the day goes on, I'll also mark down items. So I'll walk around and what's not selling, you can mark down. People will also ask just random things that you'll need to write down or if you have any leftovers they wanna come back. I feel like I have a ton of notes at the end of the day, so always have paper and pen close by. Also keep a calculator close by just for adding purposes or if you do, sometimes people will come in and spend like $100 and so you'll have about 100 pieces to add up. So always keep one of those nearby just so you don't make any math mistakes. Tip number six, organizing your grot cell. I think this is one of the most important tips because people are going to judge your items as soon as they walk in and if you have it organized and clean and very clear they're going to be willing to stay more and look around. I always get comments about how organized our garage cell is, surprise surprise, but put light categories together. Like if you have all baby stuff, put that on a table together. If you have all kitchenware, put that together. All clothing, put that together. Some people I walk up and it's like they just dumped boxes out and it's just random. There's like kitchen stuff here with shoes and then other things over here. Make it easy. Present yourself like a store and putting that time in will get you more money and more customers coming back. Tip number seven, play music. <laughs> It's a really good idea as customers are coming in, especially in the beginning if it's slow to have either music or radio on or your Pandora app. It just kind of sets the mood and makes it more relaxed. It's kind of awkward you walk in and somebody's just watching you shop their items and it can be awkward and you might just want to leave. So to make your customers feel welcomed and just friendly vibe, go ahead and put some music on. Tip number eight, air fresheners. Another way to make your customers feel welcome is have air fresheners or spray something out there. Um, this is a tip from my dad. He always goes out with air fresheners right before we open. We're in a garage and you're with things that have been in boxes and sometimes there's that musty smell. So just having it smell fresh and clean will make the customers know you've taken care of your items and it's also just that welcoming feeling. So just taking the time to do this as extra step can bring you in more money. Number nine, hang your clothes. Once again, this is that extra step that may take some more time, but by hanging your clothes, you will sell so much more. There are people like me that are willing to like dig through boxes and tables, but when they're nicely hung and displayed and you can just go through them like you would at a store, you will sell more. More people are likely to go over there and kind of go through them. You can hang them from your garage. You can hang up like ropes. There are so many different ways. Pull out ladders, hang them from that but taking the time to hang them will make more money. And you don't have to give your hanger away. I just keep a box by where I sit down to have people check out, and I just take them off as I'm pricing their items to check them out. Number 10, have bags. You get the bag and fumble it. I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. It's straight up a lot. I always have bags for when people are buying multiple items so they're not like stumbling with things in their arms. When you go to the grocery store, Walmart, Target, whatever you have, Costco, save your plastic bags and I always just start cramming them in a pile and you can leave them out in your garage, underneath your sink, but then when it comes garage sale time, you can pull those out and then it just makes it easier on your customers to buy more things because they can put it in a sack and then carry it out to the car. Tip number 11, have a power cord handy. If you're selling anything electric that needs to be plugged in, have an extension cord ready to go, have it plugged in, have it sitting nearby. So if they're buying a lamp, they can plug it in and check it. Most of these people don't know who you are and they don't wanna spend a lot of money on an item to get it home and be broke. 
So fans, lights, anything like that, tools, have it where they can plug it in, check it out, and then they can buy it and be on their way. Tip number 12, be helpful. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Being kind to your customers can also make you more money. Uh, pay attention to them and their needs. If somebody's carrying around a lot of items, go take it for them and walk it back to your area. And this also helps you in the process because you can go ahead and be taking the prices off and getting it added up. So as they go, you're just adding the total. That's where you can also keep the pen and paper close by to have their running total going. And then they're not lugging it around. Also just be kind and don't be disrespectful. People are gonna wanna bargain with you and that's kind of the name of the game. So be willing to come down on prices and being kind. Um, also help them carry out. I keep my husband nearby so if I'm checking people out and we're selling a large piece of furniture or it's just a little old woman and she's got a lot of bags, help them to their car and assist them and they will always come back every year. Tip number 13, be on time. My time is money. If you've taken the time to price and set up and advertise, be on time. If you say you're going to open up at 8, you should be opening your garage door at 8, if not 7.45. I try to set up about 15 or 20 minutes before my start time because people are always waiting and it's hard to drag your stuff out when you have this crowd of people coming in. So be fair to everybody. If you say you're going to open up at 8, open up at 8 and be ready to go. Tip number 14, liability sign. Oh, sue me, sue me, what can you do me? This might sound goofy or unnecessary, but make a sign that says not responsible for any injuries and date it and take a picture. Uh, most people are coming in just to shop, but we've had a family member that's gotten sued over a garage sale. So be sure and just cover your bases get a white piece of paper and a Sharpie, write it down, stick it up where everybody can see it and take a picture. Tip number 15, have fun. You've worked so hard, you've prepped, you've prepared. Now's the time just to set back, have fun, don't stress, make lots of money. If this is like a multi-family garage sale, have people come over. We've done this with life groups, we've done this with family members, and we just chat and hang out the whole time and talk with our customers and learn things about them. So just have fun and relax, because if you're stressed, you're gonna stress your customers out and they're gonna wanna leave. So just relax and have fun. To make it fun, like we just have these things that we always do and we always have donuts for breakfast. So whoever's hosting it, we take donuts too. Um, for lunch, we'll order pizza and just hang out. So there's a way to make garage sales fun and social instead of so stressful and boring. Okay guys, that's my 15 tips for a successful garage sale. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you learned something new that you didn't know before. I hope this helps you in your next garage sale. If I missed any that you think of, leave them down in the comments box because I'd love to read them. Maybe there's something I haven't been doing this whole time. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, head over there. Yesterday I made a post to ask questions for a finance video me and my husband are filming. So go and check that out. And then also I have the link in my description box for my new Amazon store. And I'd love for you to go look around and check out all the comments I wrote on each item. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.